Hi there. Um, it's been a while and I am so happy to be back. And thank you all for all your messages and oh my God, on my birthday, the birthday wishes. I was so touched to receive everything. So I think it's been a month since I've done a Facebook Live and I really thank you for your patience. And I am so happy to be back and so happy to be talking to you. Um, I have read so many of your comments and I wanted to share with you my new friend. This is, um, this is Wayne the Scurvy Elephant. Somebody gifted him to me on my birthday in, when I was in Bristol. It came in a, a beautiful gift basket that was a, a beautiful gentleman by the name of Chris. And it was a message that he felt he got from Wayne and he actually bought um, the scurvy elephant. So thank you, Chris. Um, so today I wanted to um, address a subject which I've seen people or I have received a question like over and over again. Um, and the, the question is people who say to me that I have a friend or I know someone or a relative or somebody who is extremely positive. They think positive all the time and yet they got cancer and, or they'll say like my friend or relative or, or whoever is going through cancer and they're thinking positive all the time, but it's not working. So I want to address that belief that positive thinking is not going to let you get well or positive thinking is going to alleviate your illness. And some people seem to think that that's what I advocate. Actually, I don't. I actually advocate the, the, the opposite. It's not about staying positive all the time. It is about being yourself. And right from the beginning, right from the book, Dying to Be Me, that is actually what the book is about because even when I got cancer, I was extremely positive. And there are people who are struggling and suffering inside and, um, and feeling eaten away inside who still keep positivity on the surface. So it's not about whether you're positive or negative. You know, uh, it's of course easier for other people around you if you're being positive. You can consciously be positive. It's always more pleasant for people, but that is not what it's about is it's that is not what alleviates everything what actually improves your health and improves your immune system is being yourself and loving yourself those are the things that actually help you internally they if i was to imagine um life life force energy flowing through you the more that you love yourself and allow yourself to express yourself, the more life force energy flows through you. Whereas if you are totally focused on constantly trying to be positive, what you end up doing is you end up controlling your thoughts and you end up judging your thoughts if you're feeling things like fear or other things that come naturally to you. So, so to me, the most important thing is to really accept who you are. And in order to accept who you are, you need to start to love who you are without judgment. And once you accept and love who you are and you allow yourself to be who you are and you allow life force energy to flow through you, you can then start to identify like what of your actions or thoughts are working for you, what is getting a negative reaction and you can adjust accordingly. So it's not about, um, you know, when I say it's not about being positive, it doesn't mean you go around being negative either. It doesn't mean you go around being annoying either, but it really is about al allowing yourself to be who you are and allowing your life force energy to flow through you and loving who you are. Now, I know that the next question will be, so how do I do that? How do I love who I am? How do I love myself? Um, so here is the, um, a few tips on how to love yourself. The people who find it hardest to love themselves are usually people who end up being um, people pleasers and doormats. And, um, and so if you, if that's you, and, and usually when someone is unable to love themselves, you end up trying to win everyone else's approval because you need their approval because you don't love yourself. And that's how you need everybody to like you. And so you end up being a doormat or a people pleaser. 
So the first thing I would say in learning to love yourself is in recognizing that you are constantly trying to please other people and you're doing things that are not you just to get other people's approval. You're saying yes to things that you would rather say no to because you don't want to disappoint other people. You want their approval because you don't have your own approval. So the first thing to do is to recognize that and then start to learn to say no. Start to identify what are the things, what are the things that I'm doing that are not mine? What are the things I'm doing because I'm afraid to disappoint other people? And gradually learn to say no and to be honest. Um, it's really important for you to understand that you need to be honest with yourself about this and also be honest with the people whom you have been saying yes to when you feel like saying no. Because if you imagine that everybody who, um, who's done good stuff for you, just imagine everybody who's said yes to you and actually they wanted to say no and people who are feeling they're doing it because they're afraid to say no. Can you imagine if people are doing that to you, how you would feel if you found that out? Or can you imagine that every nice thing that's been done for you, which you have assumed has been done out of love and you later find out, no, it's been done out of obligation or done out of a fear that people have of saying no. You, you would feel awful if you found that out, that other people were doing things for you out of obligation or out of fear of saying no. You would rather they were honest. And so you need to, uh, you need to actually offer the same to other people because it's almost like undermining them or undermining the way that they would respond to you saying no. It's like you don't trust them enough or you don't believe they love you enough to want for you what you want for yourself. So you need to allow other people to get to know you for who you are. And so by doing that, um, and the way to do that is to actually be unafraid to be who you are and be unafraid to say no. So that's, that's number one. Number one is that be unafraid to say no and stop doing things that are not you. Um, the number two thing to do to learn to love yourself is to learn to receive. So people who don't love themselves very commonly are good at giving. They're giving and gi giving of themselves, but they never learn to receive. They're terrible at receiving. In fact, the minute that you receive something, and, and this is not a judgment for me to you because this is who I was. This is the person I was. So the minute that we receive something, we immediately feel obligated to, re to return the favor. And we're immediately feeling, oh my God, I don't deserve this. And this is because we don't feel deserving and worthy. So we immediately feel, what can I do to return the favor? What can I do back for them? And so my suggestion to you is that when you receive something, accept it as a gift, enjoy it, allow yourself to enjoy it and accept it and know that you are deserving and worthy of it. That's, that's what loving yourself is. It's about knowing you're deserving and worthy. It's about knowing that the reason the person is giving you the gift is because at some level they have already received something from you. And so from their heart, they may be repaying you and you may not be aware of what you're doing, but in their way, they're repaying you. So accept it. And then organically or naturally, you will get an opportunity to give them something spontaneously where it's not contrived. It's not about you repaying a favor. Gifts should be something that is very organic and natural and comes from the heart. It's not about repaying people because repaying people is not love. Repaying people is seeking approval. Repaying people is conditional. It's not unconditional. So if it is true love, if it is truly unconditional, then giving people the gift, whether it's a gift of yourself, your love, whatever, it is unconditional and it should be completely spontaneous and organic and not contrived. So when someone gives you a gift, receive it and learn to receive. Be aware if you are not good at receiving and be aware that you need to open your receiving channels. Also, when you open your receiving channels, 
you allow energy to flow through you. You allow abundance to flow through you because you allow it to come and you allow yourself to give to other people. So that's number two is receiving. That's really important. And when it comes to learning to love yourself and number three, the final one, um, which is also an act that you need to learn um, if you want to love yourself is always make time to recharge your batteries and recharging your batteries means doing things that energize you doing things that increase your life force energy. And it could be anything like walking in nature, going out for a meal with friends who make you laugh and having a good time. It could be watching a movie that you've been meaning to watch or sitting down and reading a book or soaking in a hot tub or, um, or meditating. It could be anything that recharges your batteries. You have to schedule doing that regularly because your life force energy needs to be recharged. You are, if you think of yourself like a device, like a smartphone, when your smartphone is running really low on battery, when like when that little meter at the top corner, that little icon, when it starts to go red, most people I know, they start to freak out. They're like, oh my God, I got to charge my phone. And they freak out if they can't find a charger or, or a, um, you know, a plug socket nearby. But whereas when it's our bodies, we never bother to charge them. Even when we are in our reserves, even when we are at low energy, we're still there to serve people. When you're a doormat and a people pleaser, you still put yourself last. You have to stop doing that. You have to make time to recharge your batteries. You have to make time to actually, um, to, to actually know that you're important enough and make time to uh, do things that increase your life force energy. So to go full circle back to the original, um, my original point and the original question of people saying, I have friends who are positive and they still succumbed and they still reached the end of their life or they, and they, and they passed away from cancer. So, uh, again, number one, crossing over, reaching the end of your life and crossing over is not losing a battle. It's not uh, something negative because it is beautiful on the other side. When it's our time, we do cross over. We, um, and it's, they didn't lose the battle if they crossed over, maybe they won the battle, maybe they're meant to be there. So that's number one, they didn't lose the battle. Number two is that it's, uh, when people say that, oh, and they were so positive. It's again, it's not about being positive. It's about recharging your batteries. It's about loving who you are. It's about allowing yourself to shine your light and be everything you are. And by doing that, even when you have fearful thoughts, you have to allow those thoughts. Don't suppress them. Don't judge them. Even when you have negative thoughts, it's about allowing those thoughts and accepting them as part of who you are. It's not about um, suppressing them. So remember people who are people pleasers, people who are empaths, um, who need everyone around them to feel good. They feel really stressed and nervous if people feel bad. And so they go out of their way to be positive. So being positive all the time may even be draining your batteries. But if you allow yourself to be who you are, if you love yourself, if you express yourself authentically, you could get to a place where positivity is just what emanates from you. It comes from you organically and naturally. Um, and because you know that when you need to charge your batteries, that you will go and charge your batteries so that you feel uplifted and positive, And then you uplift everyone else in the room just by your presence, because your energy is charged and positive. So that's what I wanted to share with you. Um, so that you're aware that it's not about just positive thoughts. It's much more than that. It's about loving yourself, being who you are and shining your light. So, um, I'm going to, I, before I go into questions and actually I have a room full of people here who I'm going to introduce you to in a couple of minutes. And, um, I just want to read out a couple of comments, the beautiful comments here. There's Carol who says, so true. Someone else just, I just saw a post whiz by who says, I so needed to hear this. Thank you for that. 
Um, so yeah, thank you for your beautiful comments. And really, uh, it's been a month and I have to say, I really miss all of you guys. Um, so I just want, somebody posted in the, uh, in the post section of my Facebook page, they posted a beautiful question, which actually resonated with me. And I wanted to answer that question. And then I wanted to get into um, into this whole group of people that are with me in the room. And by the way, somebody gifted me this beautiful little cup, this mini tiny teacup. And so today I'm having my tea from this. So thank you. <laughs> um, so the question that uh, we're going to punch it up onto the screen, my intrepid producer, Danny, or Boo, as we like to call him, is behind the scenes. So the question is from a lady named Oslam who posted, she says, I have a question. After you're living your life of purpose now, are there any memories about fantasies you had in your childhood or teenager time, which have become true after you started to live authentically and the life you were meant to live? Fantasies that might have been some kind of a knowing which were not recognized as such at that time. I do not know whether you will see my question or not. Well, see, I did. I just saw your question, but I just posted it. So basically what you're saying that did I have any fantasies or thoughts before that, um, that led to that have, um, that have come, come true for me now, or that I have seen, uh, actually, um, actually pan out in my life. So I loved that question because actually as a child, as a teenager and so on, there was a part of me that was destined that, that I truly believed that was destined to be something more than what my culture had, uh, had lined up for me. So, but it was a conflict. It was always a conflict between my culture and what I felt inside. Like so many of you know the story of me and my, and the way that I loved Cindy Lauper because, and her song, Girls Just Want to Have Fun was like my freedom song. So there was a part of me that it was that soul part of me, the part of me that lives forever and the part of me that um, came from the other side. You know, it's your calling, your higher self, that infinite part of you, that infinite part of me knew that I had a bigger purpose, but I, I also didn't want to displease my parents and I wanted to fit into my culture. And those two things were in conflict with each other. And when I felt I was expressing that, that soul, that soul, the person I was meant to be, um, it, you know, like going through my Cindy Lauper, uh, Lauper phase of spray, spray painting my hair and feeling that freedom and that song, girls just want to have fun and dressing like her. I was meeting with the disapproval of my culture and my parents, but there was something very freeing and very big. And that felt like I was following my soul's purpose when I was doing things like that. When I was expected to have an arranged marriage. Now, remember in my culture, women were seen um, as um, people who had to serve men. In other words, a woman's worth was, um, a woman was valued by how, how valuable she was to the men in her life. A woman's worth depended on how she served the women in her life. And there was a part of me that couldn't believe that, even though my culture believed it, and my culture tried to ingrain it in me, there was a part of me that knew that my soul was not meant to hide behind somebody's shadow. And this is why I was always running into roadblocks. This is why, even though I agreed to the arranged marriage because I wanted to please my parents, I wanted to do right by everyone. I didn't want to hurt anyone. At the same time, my soul couldn't go through with it. And so this is why I always say to people, it's really important for you to tune in to your higher self, your soul, and to realize you are more than just this physical body. We are so much more and you have to tune into that and listen to that. And, um, that part of me knew it knew, even though no, even though 
I didn't know how my life would pan out. I couldn't imagine, I couldn't have imagined what it is today. That part of me that was not my physical body knew that there was something more I was meant to be than what I was pushed, being pushed into being. And that was why I got cancer. And I'll tell you the other thing. It wasn't that because I got cancer that I learned my lesson or I learned to tune into my higher self. It wasn't cancer that healed me or taught me. It was death. It was death that made me realize that there is something more. And that this is why I share my story. I don't want people to have to go through what I went through. And I don't want people to realize this only after they die. So that is why I share my story. And so listen to your higher self, follow your calling, follow what your soul wants for you, not what society wants for you. So yeah, there's my message, my sermon. And now I wanted to bring in my wonderful team. So first of all, I wanted to, uh, many of you have met her already, Roz, my right-hand person who's at this moment sitting on my left side. But, <laughs> <laughs> and I told Roz, so I've seen Roz in this blouse before, and I told her to wear it today so that she'll blend in with my wall. Yes. <laughs> Welcome, Roz. Thank you. Thanks Hi, for everybody. So Roz has come in from Las Vegas. Here from Las Vegas. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. You're nervous, aren't you? A little, little bit. Good, yeah. <laughs> and um, and then I want and Milena's here. Milena, come on in. And and look who Milena's brought. She's brought Freddie the unicorn. Yes, Milena. Hi, everyone. <laughs> it's can, he stay, can he stay for the rest of the show? He can. I think he's been feeling left out. Because yeah, you know. Wanted to come the same way. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's Wayne. And you know, it's it's funny because um, a lot of people have been asking about Freddie. I think he might have to have his own show or his own fan club. I think he'd like that. <laughs> he would. Isn't isn't my team beautiful? And, and Danny, we can't have the team without you. So Danny's running things from behind the scenes. I'm here. I'm here. No, Hello, you want to come here. You need to come here. It doesn't matter. If it all falls apart, it's fine. Everyone will understand. Guys, I want you to write in the comments if you want to see Danny. You know, Danny, <laughs> Danny. <laughs> and Milena, you can check the comments later. Okay, and yeah, I left my phone back there, but yeah. Yeah, they want you. Danny, they're calling They're you. calling you. Oh, you know what? <laughs> yeah, and so let's see if they recognize the head. <laughs> Danny. <laughs> you have to get a little higher, a little higher. A little higher, a little higher. <laughs> Hello. And welcome to the Sunday show. Hello, everybody. Hi. See? I'm, yeah, I'm Danny, in case you don't know me. Thank you very much. I can see that, uh, Milena. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I just wanted to say hi to everybody. Um, for everybody that I met during the uh, trip during, uh, in Bristol, in Stuttgart, in, uh, in Basel, that came up to me and said uh, hi, um, hi back. For those of you that insist that I come onto the show, um, I told you I'll be back. <laughs> but now it's time for me. To go. No, you don't need to go. So last night I was at a uh, book signing, Dr. Sue Mortar. She just launched her book and I was at her book signing. And somebody actually came up to me and said, I watch your shows. And my favorite one was the one with Danny. I just love him. She was a huge fan of yours. She said you have so much charisma and she just loves you. I think she's just referring to my luscious locks here. You know. <laughs> she is. Absolutely. And your shining personality. It's my shining personality. It's my piercing blue eyes. <laughs> yes. No? <laughs> I see. Okay. All right. And we Roz, you're supposed to pipe in and say, yes, it's your, it's your it's piercing your blue eyes. Personality. Uh, and, yes, uh, and your piercing blue eyes. And my yeah. piercing blue eyes, exactly, yes. absolutely. Yes, yes. <laughs> He's right. colorblind, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not colorblind. That is a beautiful gray wall that you have behind you, right? And that, and that is a beautiful gray blouse that you're wearing, Roz. Yes, a gray <laughs> blouse. <laughs> People are going to think we're really weird. Yeah, I think they already know that about this show. 
I, I'm, I'm just wondering, um, suddenly Melaine is behind the camera. She was here a second ago. I know, she ran away. Yeah, I know. Anyway. And, and we should... We should all, you guys should come in in front of the camera too. Come Absolutely. On. Julie, Rob, come on. Okay, for and all of the. Elena's doing a Danny. For She's all crawling. of the, for all of those that Everybody's don't doing a Danny. know, I'm here. actually going to I blow the cover here everybody? because everybody can hear me Everybody's on the microphone. Everybody's crawling under the camera. Standing right yeah. behind Anita is Roz's fantastic daughter, Julie. That's Julie, <laughs> Roz's daughter. And, and over there, that's Rob, Melena's beau. <laughs> what does Bo stand for? Yes. Yes. Isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Eye candy, yes. <laughs> That's I thought that was my job. It is. <laughs> Eye candy. <laughs> candy. <laughs> so so I so I'm so grateful for you guys and I'm just wondering if there's any way that we can hit a couple of questions. If anyone has access to the comments that would be cool but you know today everybody's just crawling around the floor it's true i'm not kidding you guys they're like just crawling like pets all of them yeah we got the ringside seat yeah we get to see them all because they're trying to get under the camera so it's really funny um and in fact, Danny's, I think he's hitting, Magdalena says a big hello from Portsmouth, UK, from Polish fans. Yay. Hi, Magdalena. Lovely to hear from you. And maybe we can take one question and, uh, and then we can let everyone go and enjoy their Sunday. How about that? Anything? Someone had asked, you know, what if you've been doing stuff for so long, saying yes when you want to say no for so long, and people just expect it. So how do you, how do you say ah. no after, all, they just expect it, you're supposed to say yes all the time, and you want to start saying no, how do you do that? Okay, so that's a great question, and in case anyone didn't hear it, it's how do you, uh, if, if you've been saying yes instead of saying no for so long that people just start to expect it, um, they've, uh, and how do you start to say no after that? So what's actually happening there is that the people are starting to take you for granted, and I think it's really important to be loving and honest at the same time and to actually bring the people together and let them know what it is that you're feeling or what you would rather do. So here's the thing. If you think in terms of if you were able to say no, what is it that... Um, so you're, the reason you want to say no is because what you're doing is draining your energy. If you had more energy, what would you like to make time to do instead? So start to look into doing that. And then when you approach these people, you say, oh, um, because they love you, you do it in a loving way. You tell them what you would like to make time to do in your life. Now, when people truly love you, they want you to do things that make you happy. They really do. If they only want you to do things that serve them, then that's not love. That's not unconditional love. So I really, no matter how long you've been doing those things for, it is important for you to sit down with them and talk to them because what's happening right now is that you are building up resentment towards them because they're taking you for granted. You're doing something you don't want to do. You're building up resentment for them. Right now, it's actually not fair to them because you haven't given them a chance to prove to you that they would be okay with you saying no. Give them that chance to prove it to you. Present it to them in a loving way. Um, and, if, and I am certain, and in mo more cases than we realize or than we give credit to, people actually support us and make it easy for us to do what we love to do. Um, I have found that in my life and most people I speak to, they find that, that if the people truly love them, they will support them. So if the people truly love you, they will support you in doing what you want to do that makes you happy. So thank you for that wonderful question. Um, and so I just wanted to say bye and have a great week. 
and I'm so happy you had a chance to meet my team. They're a great team. Without them, I can't do what I do. I wouldn't be able to do it. Um, and so I wish you all a wonderful week ahead and thank you again for everything you do, everything, all your comments, your messages. Love you all. See you next Sunday. Mwah. Bye. Thank you so much for tuning in to my video. And if you really enjoyed it, I would love for you to subscribe and the subscribe button is here. And also I would love for you to watch my suggested video, which is over here. And if you love my content, please feel free to share it to people who you think that would benefit from it. Thank you.